Fight Night 9. Uh, pretty which, fun. Which on paper was kind of one of the weaker ones that they've put together so far for the for the prime cards. Um, but yeah, if it weren't for this card, it would be a it would be a tough week of fights. <laughs> It'd be a tough Man. week of fights. Well, I'm glad that we had the main event, which was a uh, Nongo versus uh, Jonathan Haggerty. Dude, and shout out HLB Comer. Good to see you. What's up, HLB ha- Comer? Haggerty versus Nongo. You know what's funny about this? I mean, just to preface this for people who don't know, but this fight was uh, – everybody was complaining about this fight when they made it. <laughs> Everyone was saying, really? what are we doing? Haggerty does not deserve a title shot. Nongo's way out of his league. There's other guys he could be fighting. What are we doing giving Haggerty a title shot? And then he comes out there and pulls off one of the biggest upsets upsets in Muay Thai history. This was insane. I mean, so for somebody that hasn't been watching one for very long, right? Yeah. And I hear of the legend of Nongo, mm-hmm. and you know, um, you I've seen some fight, fights of Jonathan right? Haggerty. Yeah, watch his last fight. I've seen some fights of Jonathan Haggerty already. Uh, mm-hmm. And so going into this, I was like, look, I've seen Jonathan yeah, Haggerty go up against, matchup. yeah, against uh, Rotang. So this yeah. should be pretty good. You know what I mean? Uh, distance control was amazing from mm-hmm. Haggerty. He looked the bigger fighter and he fought like the bigger fighter in there uh, yeah. last night. Uh, and th- there was just this one thing where, like, I noticed with Nongo, he, he, he seems like a really exciting fighter. And mm-hmm. then as soon as like he decided to start trading with with Haggerty up close, like his hands just came down just a little bit. Yeah, and he kept on doing well, that. <clears throat> well, with the, that's the difference, right? With the four ounce gloves in Muay Thai, they're used to the big gloves where you can block a lot easier. It's harder for mm-hmm. the shots to slip in. So the the punching is is slightly different. That's why kind of like the Dutch Dutch style Muay Thai is gonna maybe start coming through in these one cards because they introduced like the boxing into Muay Thai a little bit more. Um, but Nongo's kicks are what's so crazy about him. And he, he threw a couple inside leg kicks that, that really, you could tell they stung Haggerty. And he even said, he's like, once I ate those leg kicks, it was like, I need to turn this on now. Otherwise it's going to be a long night for me. Ooh, that and, bad, huh? Yeah. And, and there was a point where <laughs> Nongo threw the kick and Haggerty caught it and dumped him. And I was like, yep. Ooh, Haggerty has been training for Nongo because the kicks are electric from him. And that's what you have to negate. And if, if you're going to win. There was another time where Nongo threw the leg kick and Haggerty was just like, bop, bop, bop. Just the the one-two uppercut yep. from real long, like you said, the distance management. And Nongo was just shelled up, but he, they got through. And I was like, oh, man, we might have a fight here. And then, oh, my God, dude. And then he, he threw this combo where it was a jab and then a right hook to the body. And it was just bop, bop. And they both landed clean. And I was like, that's nasty. He steps back and then goes to throw it again. And you can see it's the same setup. And you can see Nongo start to curl like he's going to eat the shot to the body. But mm-hmm. instead of that right hook to the body, it was just a nice little right straight where, where Haggerty leaned like he was going to throw the hook to the body. But instead, he came over the top with it. And it just snuck in right right on the this back piece of the jaw of Nongo and just shut him off for a second. And I was like, holy shit, he dropped him in the first round. And I was in the 1FC Discord. And everyone was like, oh, shit. Because right before that, everyone's like, Pretty much a foregone conclusion. Nongo's going to win this fight, and then he stung him right there, dropped him. Everybody's freaking the fuck out in the chat, and, then, and he gets up and he's wobbly, and we're like, "Oh God, he does not look good." He gets the eight count, puts his hands up. The boss is like, "Let's go!" And immediately, bop, 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 straight punches. He's down in the corner, and it was like, "Oh my God!" If he gets another knockdown, it's over. And then Haggerty was like, "Who gives a fuck about three knockdowns? I'm about to flatline this guy." <laughs> And he pushes him up against the ropes. And he's and he's like antsy, ready to get back in there. And he gets the standing eight count. He's he's good to come back. And Haggerty's ready to go. And the boss is like, whoa, dude, back the fuck off. Like, we gotta reset. Starts it yeah. again and immediately pushes him against the ropes, steps away, bop, 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 and just fucking drops him. I mean, it looks sped up the way he fell. Yeah, and I, I think mean, this holy is a shot where uh Olivia Costa's right like, mm, probably should have stopped it earlier. Look at his face. He's like, mmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, so I was worried. Yeah, thanks, Richard. He's <laughs> using uh, I I was worried because uh, Haggerty, you, you mentioned how anxious mm-hmm. he was to get back in there to finish Nongo. 
And yeah. I was like, dude, it's buying Nongo extra time right now because Olivier had to continue stepping Has back and pushing push away. And then mm -hmm. went up to Nongo, was like, walk towards me. And then turned around, had to push him back. And walked back up to Nongo, I was like, dude, every single second counts here, right? So yeah, I was a little yeah. worried that, like, dude, you're, you're giving him too much too much time. And then he's like, nah. Dude, I'll put it, him I out mean, right now. I'll, I'll put him out right now. Basically, I'm trying to pull up because uh, we can actually show. I, I love this fucking picture. It's so good. It's a great dude, picture. This was, I mean, once he finished him, it was like the you couldn't even read anything in the chat because it was just like everybody's freaking the fuck out. I mean, it was he was not supposed to. Oh, I'm not gonna say he was not supposed to win that fight, like he was brought in to lose, but nobody thought he was gonna win, and especially not by first round knockout with two knockdowns right before. Like that was I mean, the scene after with the confetti and it's like I mean, it's just so big, you know? It was it so is, big. Man. Uh, what a moment, though. And, and see, so for me, somebody that, again, hasn't been watching one very long, um, I, I wasn't, like, going nuts. So you're telling me that this would have been, like, the equivalent to, like, let's say when Holly Holm beat Ronda Rousey? Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah. This this is like Buster Juliana Douglas, Pena? Mike Tyson. This is like Buster Douglas, Mike, Mike Tyson. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. This is, this so is it's big. pretty big. It was, it's, Man. it's. It's potentially the biggest upset in Muay Thai history. It was insane. And it's not like... And I got I to mean, witness it. Fantastic. You got to witness it. Yeah, I mean... It was just so crazy, dude. I, nobody expected Nago to get finished like that. Because... not So, to, to set the, 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 the stage a little bit more, Nago, he has like 265 wins or some shit like that. 270 wins, something like that. Um, never really like a finisher. He was kind of like a point fighter. But this run that he's on going into this is like legendary run. I mean, he's fought in the five best guys that one has to offer, all very good guys, and not just beat them all in a row, but finish them all. And he was not a finisher. Wow. It's like he just flipped a switch and started finishing guys. And so he stops five of the best fighters in the world back to back. Like it was an insane run. And then so, so this was like – Going into this, I was like, I, I love Haggerty, but I kind of want to see Nango get the finish just so we can continue to witness this like insane run that he's on, legendary run. Yeah. And then Haggerty was like, Who gives a fuck about legends? And then just dang, legend killer starched him. Legend I'm a Haggerty killer, fan. I'm a Haggerty fan. I like it. All I mean, right, yeah, he, I mean, very fun, very fun fighter, right? I mean, look you at this. have uh, oh, you have some more on this fight, yeah, because you pull up some pictures or we'll pull up something just because you know. Because 1FC is fucking awesome and they let us do this shit. Because yeah. <clears throat> why, you know, we could talk about it. Or, you know. We could show it. We could show it. So here's the first <laughs> one. I thought it was a headbutt when I first watched it. Watching it live, I was like, oh no, it was a headbutt. And then it was that sneaky right hand. Bam, that drops him. So quick, man. So they let him up. And then, here we go. Bam, bam, bam. Dropped. And look at him. He's like, That's I it. need to get this finished. I need to yeah. get this finished. Look at him so like, antsy. <laughs> it's Choke. crazy, dude. Yeah. Just, oh, dude, he comes in with that flying right. Yeah. And then that elbow. Bah, bah, bah. Oh, my oh God. My what God. a shot. Yeah. I cannot Olivier believe he pulled cost. that off. The way he waves it off after he just falls flat on his face. He's like, yeah, no shit. Dude. Yeah. One, it's a third knockdown. Two, he's flatlined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's awesome, man. And you know what's funny? Well, they're like, they're like, uh, the commentary could have been better, but they're like, during the during the replays of it all, they're talking about the three knockdown rule and stuff like that. And it's like, hey, 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 he was out. We don't need yeah. it. Even if the if if that was the first knockdown, it was over. We don't need to hear about the rule right now. This was he was out out. Yeah, when you face him like that, it was so nasty, man. Just he steps away and just and just I mean, he's dropped like a sack of potatoes, man. It was not like a stumble, like he was out before he hit the ground. Nasty. Yeah, yeah. It was good. Hey, congratulations, Jonathan Haggerty. Uh, yeah, Nongo, seriously. I mean, these, I feel like these guys fight so often. Even after they do, yeah, they, they do. get knocked out. You know? And that's kind of been some people have kind of erred on the side of caution with this four ounce Muay Thai because it it's a big shakeup for these Thai fighters who are used to fighting so often. But mm. to switch them up and put them with these gloves to fight that often with these gloves is pretty pretty dangerous. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's we'll see dangerous. when we uh, get to see Nongo God in there again. Fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> all right do you want to move on to the uh co-main yeah dude speaking of fun to watch man <laughs> all right we had a uh, marie sabevi versus halal or halil amir yeah and going into this one i picked amir a bevy is 
a wild fighter. I've never seen him before. And in the chat, I was like, dude, talk about getting put off balance, right? Or putting yourself off balance and out of position to eat shots. The whole first round was just a mere rocking this guy. And Abebe's just throwing spinning kicks, throwing overhands where he's moving across the whole ring and just getting clipped left and right. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a bad night. And then I thought he won the second round. Yeah. yeah dude, fun <laughs> fighter. The, the one thing you already pointed out that I uh, noticed I have here on my notes was uh, he found himself and put himself in a position to be off balance so often. Yeah, and, you know, true. dude, the, the thing is uh, Amir was cracking him too. Not to take yeah. anything away from Amir, but it doesn't help when, you know, you don't have a solid base and you're getting mm-hmm. cracked and your body's flailing like in a couple different positions <laughs> yeah, because you, you just don't have that solid foundation. You're off balance. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure that didn't help out. But, dude, there's some <laughs> fun exchanges in Amir when he got him in that, uh, what was it? The, um, what, Almost like a, a knee bar, knee bar? split type the thing. Knee yeah. Bar, yeah, yeah. Well, a bad uh, got him with a calf slicer. I was like, well, holy in the second shit. round. I was like, of course this guy is going to be the guy that lands a calf slicer because he's just throwing these crazy exchanges. This guy's wild. And he gets to the calf slicer, and I was like, of course this guy is going to get this. And then the yeah, baby's like, no. <laughs> uh, so that, and then uh, you had the uh, – almost got him in the rear naked choke at the end. Amir did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but uh, between the grappling exchanges, uh, you know, a baby kind of being all over the place with his body and, and having wild <laughs> exchanges, it was a fun fight for sure. Yeah, it was one of those things where I was like, a bevy, I mean, he was 6 0 coming into this. So he's very green. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, this was good. This was a, a good long fight for him to really learn a lot from uh, and go back to the drawing board from. I expect to see him a little bit more refined in his next fight. Um, but <clears throat> it was one of those fights where going into the, after the first round, I was like, this dude is wild. He's just going to get knocked out. By the end of the fight, I was like, I want to see a bevy more. I want to see this guy. <laughs> this guy's fun, man. Like, you know, win or lose, yeah, this guy's sure. fun to watch. <laughs> He's entertaining. Oh, man. And Amir's very uh, solid. So he climbs to 9-0. Yeah. You know, and you can see the patience. Just, you know, he was cracking them, but wasn't getting overzealous. Because that's when you get caught by some wild man like a bevy. Is when you get yeah. a little too crazy for the finish. Um, so it was a fun fight. Very fun fight. Uh, before that, let me see. Who else do we have? Okay. We had... Musanyan versus Minowa. Yeah. All right, dude. I fell I fell asleep during this fight, and yeah. I had to rewatch the other ones. You know, in the morning, the next yeah. morning. Um, <laughs> this was a very strange fight. It was a very strange fight, and I did not feel good watching this for some <laughs> reason. For one reason or another, I texted you, and I was like, "I feel wrong for watching this fight," and I don't know what it is. <laughs> Or was it the I fact that Bokeng is, is, yeah, he's five foot one. Is, <laughs> we is go ready to hear those names again, please, Ramiro, go for All it. All right, Bokeng Masunyen versus Hidoba Minowa. That's right. Been working That's on right. it. That's right. Been working on it. <laughs> Shout out. Okay, so uh, first round, Bokeng lights up Minowa's nuts with a kick. They had to take some time. But then, man, he mixed in the takedown so well. Where he got the takedown, he gets into side control. <laughs> he shall become a beautiful uh bokeng has him on the ground inside control and is leaping up with his feet to launch his legs up in the air and then come down with it with knees to the face and it was beautiful to watch it was so cool it was brutal it was brutal dude i mean he's like doing the worm but but like at the now top say lifting his up. feet up like it was really like this yeah and slamming and it back down shooting that knee back in I mean, he might have the longest torso on the shortest <laughs> set of legs I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, yeah. Well, who we were just talking about someone else who looked like that. Your uh, right favorite, Gal- Kelvin Gasolum. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Kelvin, Kelvin Gasolum just long. He's a fridge. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, uh, the the fight kind of slowed down a little bit after that. There was a nasty slam that Bo King landed, uh, where Herb Dean was like, oh, "Was it Herb Dean that referenced this one? I think it was Herb Dean. It was." Um, yeah, and, and we're talking about how he flew across the country to mess up fights, or across yeah. the, the world actually. <laughs> yeah, across the world to screw up more fights. But yeah, yeah, it was a fun fight. Um, Bokeng, uh, uh, he's right in line for a title shot. He just lost to Brooks. Um, he got rear naked choked in the first round, so maybe maybe this fight will get him a title shot. Um, it, that's a fun division, though, man. These guys and are this electric. Was flyweight or what? 
was it flyweight? Yeah, one twenty five. But it it be kind of if if it were the UFC, probably more straw weight. It's it's tough. Some guys would kind of go lower than that. Some guys would go higher. Like because Brooks, the champion of this division, he was uh he was in the UFC. You know, so mm. okay, flyweight. Well, that it was uh, interesting. Yeah, for me to watch that. It's fight. Interesting. Yeah, dude. Okay, now this next fight that we're going to cover. Oh, best my fight of the God. whole Felipe weekend. Lobo versus Samapet. Fair text? Sam Pet, yeah. Look at you. Okay. Hey. Not Sam Pet. Sam Pet. No, Sam Pet. Uh, dude, uh, so Sam Pet, another one of those guys where everybody was, uh, like I heard, you know, everybody like, oh, uh, Sam Pet, Fair text, you know, looking really good. Super excited to see him fight right now. And then, okay. He, number Felipe one. Lobo. Right, number one. Felipe Lobo. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm thinking about the two different fights or the couple different fights we've already covered, right? Where Na- yeah. Nongo gets dropped. And you see him standing up, and Olivier Costa's like, all right, walk back towards me, rubs the gloves, walk back towards me, and then, you know, he's like still on wobbly legs, and I'm like, oh, no, this is all bad. Now, yeah, Felipe Lobo bad. gets dropped, bounces right back up, and he's like, I'm good, dude. Shakes his head. Like, no. And he's just and he's staring like, down Simba like, Whatever, dude. Yeah. He's just staring like, down oh, okay. the whole time. We got ourselves a fight. When that <laughs> well, happened- the first <laughs> – yeah. I was so excited. Because the first round was like kind of a feeling out process, right? Uh, good deep kicks to the body from Lobo. Uh, mm-hmm. Sema Pet doing a great job with his leg kicks. He's got the lean back on the high kicks. He'll lean back on the high kick and oh, dodge the matrix style. Defense, and then, so yeah. awesome. And then I mean, he'll throw the leg kick like right that. after. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then the second round, they start trading a little bit more. Look at that. That's straight up matrix stuff, dude. And then you know he landed a leg kick right after that. It's How do you oh. do that? But uh, yeah, he in the second round, they're they're trading more. And they both connect, stepbrother style. But Sema Pet's left hook was was tighter. And it drops Lobo. And like you said, he springs right back up. He's shaking it off. He's shaking his jaw a little bit. Stung him, right? They come back. And Semipet's really just walking him down for the rest of that round and just landing on him. And it's like, man, that was a very good Semipet round. He's probably going to run away with this. And then round three started. (laughs) And round three, Lobo was like, okay. I thought Lobo maybe edged out the first round. uh, But it was a coin flip, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Uh, Second round, 10-8 for Semipet, right? So it's like, man. If you're Lobo, you probably need to go out there and get a finish. And, yeah. and and he knew this. And you know what he did? Went out there. He went out there and he went for the finish. And <laughs> I can show you, and I can show you what he did. Oh, please do. Please do. I have it queued up because I wanted to show this because it's the best thing of the entire weekend. Because it was Ooh, okay. Fucking, was it not? No, it was really good. I mean, look at this. <laughs> I mean, look oh. at these guys trading. This is Lobo just got dropped the last round, and he's 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 going for the finish, man. And Sam yeah. Pet's lighting him up, and he's on the ropes, and they're just fucking swinging, dude. This was insanity. In, again, the I mean, urgency look at these guys. in Lobo. Look at this. Wow. And I mean, man, just I, chaos. And Sam Pet's like, "Hey, I need a breather," and he gets cracked. And it's like, "Wait, what's happening? Is he about to get the finish?" <laughs> like the thing with uh Sam and Pet too, it's like, hey, uh, circle out, do something. But it looked like he was just yeah. so content to be like, all right, dude, you want to trade? Let's trade. We're banging. Yeah. And Lobo just hunting him down, dude, refuses to take a back step and then just cracks oh, him on the ropes. Look at that. Oh my God. Oh, what a finish. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. I mean, just so you know, this is uh these are the most or like the longest time Rich Casual has been watching fights. Right now, with yeah, the just, last two clips that you clip. shared right now. <laughs> He's like, all right, that's enough fights for me for the next month. Yeah, that covers me for the year. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, dude, dude, what a performance by uh, by Lobo. Yeah, I mean. Another Semipet, upset. Too. That's another upset, right? A big upset. This is another one where everyone's like, you guys ready for a showcase on Semipet? Semipet's ranked number one, man. Uh, Lobo just got knocked out by uh, Nango uh, right before this. Not right before this, but that was his last fight. Um, unranked. You know, he goes in there. He gets dropped in the second round. Uh, and and that's the thing. You fight a guy like Semipet, the first round is gonna be close. You know, yep. unless you're terrible, the first round's gonna be close. And then it's like, okay, but how do you deal with the second round? And he got dropped, and he got beat up the whole second round. So it's like, okay, yeah, that's that's kind of like what everybody expected. Semipet's gonna run through with this, and then he just went out there in the third and took it to him and wilted him. Ultimately, and it's tough to do that to a guy like that. You know, Semipet is a, a legend. You know, crazy fight though. Crazy fight, dude! Uh, and I'm telling you, that kind of uh, set the rest of the uh, the card up for me. 
that yeah. one right well, there. Well, I texted you, I, right? I texted you before that fight. I was like, hey, this this is this one here, right here is the one that's going to turn it all up. Like, this is the one. Yeah. And they went to war. It, it delivered, dude. It delivered right. Uh, before that, we had Denise Zamboanga versus Julie Mezabarba. Hey, that Mezabarba is a lot easier for you, huh? Mezabarba. <laughs> Mezabarba. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a lot easier for sure. Yeah. Denise, man. She's so good. She's so good. And D go, nice. going in D nice. Yeah. I actually just I just watched that Key and Peel like two days ago. Again, it, it never yeah. gets old, dude. Never yeah. gets old. He just breaks the clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, this this fight was fun, man. Um Denise really went out there and started trading with her early. And I I didn't expect that. They were just they were swinging and banging. There was a lot of swinging and banging on this card. And I was all there mm-hmm. for it. But Nash, uh, dude, you know, uh didn't D nice found that one two that uh landed mm-hmm. she's like oh let me try it again and like straight up at one point i counted it did three yeah. in a row one two step back one two step back yeah. one two step back and yeah. as a five i was like i think she's gonna throw the one two next and like finally <laughs> like adjusted but i was like god damn girl come on well, what's funny too is Denise is like a jiu-jitsu specialist right she's really good on the ground so i was and, and as barbara's a striker so i was like denise is gonna have to take this down and instead she just went to war with her and and Mezzabarba was the one that was starting to try to take it down. And I was like, do you really want to do that? And then, you know, I mean, there's not really much, too much to talk about in this fight, but it was a very fun fight. Um, no, the, the only other thing I wanted to point out was I loved uh, D-Nice's urgency in bouncing back yeah. up whenever Mezzabarba did throw her down or take her down. And yeah. I mean, like, slammed her down up in a second. Like yeah. he bounced right back up, and that happened a couple times. I was like, "All right, there we go." Like, here we go. You know, th- kind of those hands. Uh, Michael Bisping would be very happy. Yeah, he's always harping on that, right? Michael Bisping would have been very happy. Position. Don't accept it. You know. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> that was a great oh, accent. Man. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, HOP Comer already knows too. I'm not very good with accents, so it's all good. Nah, I like him. <laughs> Hey everybody, Ramiro and Will here. Thank you so much for watching that short clip. It's just a small clip of what we covered this last Sunday. Yeah, if you want to check out the full fight card recap, uh, the link is in the description and it's going to be on screen at the end here. Uh, and don't forget to go back and watch our fighter interviews that we have. Uh, and don't forget to tune in live every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, uh, and you can join in on the fun. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, Hit the notification bell. goes a long way. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching that short clip from Story of the Fight.